Dr. Lori here with Value This with Dr. Lori. Carol's here. What have you found? I found a Rembrandt. I can't <laughs> even believe it. She and can't even believe it. It's not even that expensive. I mean, uh, here's a Rembrandt in, in, in one of a kind consignments gallery in Princeton. Now, is, does this have any value? It looks uh, like a Is print. it a Rembrandt? That's the first thing you have to look at. So you have to look for paper and process. Right? So how is it applied to this piece of paper? And is this piece of paper made actually, you know, in existence during the lifetime of Rembrandt, which is 1609 to 1669? Aha! PhD art historian. She knows that stuff. All right. How would I ever know that based on this beautifully framed thing? You know, as a PhD antiques appraiser, I always tell people, look for paper and process. So the paper is from the late 19th century and it has been washed. That means they took actual rubber erasers and they, wa and they basically erased off all of the damage, all the acid burning, which it would have had because mats around these pieces would do that. This piece is worth somewhere around $500. It is a restrike. That means they take the old plate that Rembrandt used and basically they reproduce the plate and then they reprint it onto new paper. How would I, with something like this, have a picture like this that somebody else could have just made look like this and That's made right. look old? How do I know that? Okay, you've got to look at the paper on the back. So you have to look for the construction of the you've paper. Got this on well, the back. then you've got to do this before you frame it up. Or oh, before ah. you buy it. Do they let you in, in stores like punch or a hole in the back? Well, typically, no. Um, but basically, what you want to do is before you start saying, I want to buy this piece, you have to realize what's what. Now, if you had the real one from 1645, which is the height of Rembrandt's career, we're talking thirty to $50,000. Okay. So if it's not priced at that, either A, somebody doesn't know what they're doing, or B, basically, you've got this piece that you have to think about, oh, it must be a restrike. And uh, most of the Rembrandts are restrikes because he was a very good entrepreneur and knew to basically break the plates or damage or get rid of the plates because the plates meant somebody else is making money on his artwork. Okay. To me, because I don't know anything, prints aren't worth it. Prints, by virtue of their definition, are reproductions. So they're pictures of famous pictures or something else. So how do you tell a good one? Here's an example. This one over here is not signed at all. This piece was signed. It's got a signature, though, It right does here. have a signature, but that particular piece of paper was never touched by that artist. How do you know that? Because that particular signature is actually of the same ilk as the whole rest of this colotype, which is a fancy word for poster. So what's happened is they had the actual work of art, the painting, for example, and they took a picture after it was signed. And that lowers the value. That, that lowers the value. So those you want to stay away from because you can tell when something has been signed after the fact. For example, this has an addition number on it, which has been done after the fact. So they printed it first on the piece of paper, and then they added the addition number. Let's talk about these addition numbers. Addition numbers are numerators and denominators. You remember 12th grade math. Okay. <laughs> Numerator and denominators. And you've got 110 over 750. That means there's 750 of these. You're at number 110. What number do you? want. One. One, two, three, four. You don't want into the hundreds. Okay. And you don't want 750 of 750. Right. Why? Because it's a very large print run. There's 750 of them. That means that there's 749 others out there, there just is, like yours. Is 750 f fainter? Because it's been printed off oh, so many sure, times? Oh, sure, sure. It could be worse. It could be worse, yes. Okay. Um, and But basically, it could be the worst of the worst. It could be just as good as all the rest, depending on go how good your machine is. Okay, but somebody who's going to buy it, or if you're going to buy it, you want to see a low number on the top. And a low number on the bottom. And a low number on the bottom. I want low and low, right? I want a low number at the top okay. and a low number on the bottom. When you think about prints, I want you to think about those particular aspects of printing. And then there's a lot more to discuss when it comes to prints. We'll talk about condition and how to keep condition in a future episode. I would love to learn more about that. And, and let me, I just want to prove to you <laughs> the that, Rembrandt's the, that okay. the Rembrandt that I just <laughs> threw down on this bench is actually still in fine shape. Dr. Lori, thank you so much. Where can we find more information? DrLoriV.com. You can find more information and you can watch all of our episodes of Value This with Dr. Lori right here.